Hi, this lesson is on trigonometric angles and right angles. So in general, we will be learning about new functions called the inverse trigonometric functions. Um, and it's exactly what they sound like. They are the inverse functions to the six trigonometric functions we know. So there are six inverse trigonometric functions. Um, and they are listed here. So there's different notation um, depending on the author that's uh, discussing these. So you might see different textbook, different videos that may uh, use different uh, way of identifying them, uh, identifying these. So um, this y equal to sine inverse of x. Remember, this is not a negative exponent when you're talking about inverse functions. It's read as sine inverse of x. But it can also be written like this, and it means the same thing that is read as the arc sine of x. They are the same function. Um, and the same is true for the other ones. Cosine inverse of x is the same as arc cosine. Notice there's two c's here of x. Um, tan inverse of x is the same as arc tan of x. Cosecant inverse of x is the same as arc cosecant. Again, there's two c's there. Secant inverse of x is the same as arc secant of x, and cotangent inverse of x is the same as arc cotangent of x, again, two c's. So just like your trig functions, uh, your inverse trig functions in your calculator, uh, you would probably see these three and not the three over here. So if you ever need to evaluate um, an arc cosecant, an arc secant, or a our cotangent, you'd have to write it in terms of um, the ones that you, you do know. Um, so check out your calculator and see if they use sine inverse or arc sine um, of an angle. All right, so because these six functions are inverse trig functions, um, and we know that inverse functions, sometimes there's a restriction on the domain so that they actually are inverses. Of the, of the six trig functions that we know, and that is true for these as well. So your, um, your sine inverse has a domain from negative one to one, and your range, these are all expressed in radians, um, is from negative pi over two to pi over two, and these are closed intervals. Um, in degrees, uh, from negative 90 degrees to 90. So. Um, this range will be important when you're evaluating inverse functions because you can't fall outside of that range. Um, cosine inverse uh, domain is from negative 1 to 1. Uh, your range is from 0 to pi closed interval or 0 degrees to 180 degrees. Your tan inverse, uh, the domain is all real numbers, um, but your range is an open interval from negative pi over two to pi over two, um, or from negative 90 degrees to 90 degrees. And that's basically because tangent is not defined at negative pi over two and pi over two. It would, it would be um, zero in the denominator. Um, cotangent also has similar restriction. Um, domain is from negative infinity to infinity, and it's an open interval from zero to pi or 0 to 180. Um, secant inverse, uh, the domain is from negative infinity to negative 1, and then from 1 to infinity, the range is from 0, closed interval there, to pi over 2, open interval, and then from pi over 2, open to pi. And again, we have to avoid pi over 2 because cosine of pi over 2 is 0, and remember secant is the reciprocal of cosine, so you can't um, divide by a negative number. Um, all right, or, and it's also in degrees. It's from 0 degrees to 90 degrees, uh, and then from 90 to 180. Cosecant inverse also has some restrictions. Domain is from negative infinity to negative 1, and then from 1 to infinity. Um, the range is from negative pi over 2, and that's closed to 0. That's open. Union, uh, open at 0 to pi over 2, closed. And then uh, in degrees, it's from negative 90 to 0, and then 0 to 90. 
Okay, so an interesting thing to remember about your inverse functions, and this was stated when we first talked about inverse functions in general, is that, again, that little negative one in the exponent does not mean one over that function. So be careful not to make that assumption. It's just a different way of stating um, arc sine. And it's true for all, all six of them. All right, so what inverse functions allow us to do? It allows us to solve for an angle. So if you're given the value of a trig function, you can find the corresponding angle. So I am told that tangent of theta is 2.470, and I want to find theta. So I need to use my inverse function, and you would definitely need a calculator for this. So theta is tan inverse of 2.467, um, and um, make sure that you um, have it in the appropriate mode. Here we're going to present it in degrees, so you want to be in degree mode, and that gives us 67.97 degrees. Um, with secant inverse, with secant, as I mentioned, secant and secant inverse are not in your calculator. So I do have to take the secant inverse of 2.045, but because I don't know um, what that, uh, I don't have secant inverse in my calculator, you need to remember that secant is um, uh, the, the cosine of theta is uh, 1 over 2.045. So then if we rewrite it in terms of cosine, I have the cosine inverse of 1 over 2.045 which gives me 60.73 degrees. So for uh, cosecant, secant, and cotangent, I would rewrite it in terms of its corresponding reciprocal first, and then take the inverse. Okay, so um, here is another one with slightly different information given. You want to find cosine of theta, given that sine of theta is 0.6725. All right, for me to evaluate cosine of theta, I need to know what theta is from this problem. So remember, I find theta by taking sine inverse of 0.6725. So you can actually enter this into your calculator all at the same time. You could take the cosine and then put parentheses of the sine inverse of 0.6725, and you would find that the cosine is uh, 0.7401. So you really never solves for theta, but that's not what you're being asked to find. You were being asked to find cosine of theta, which we did. Okay. So here's another example of why we would want to use inverse functions, inverse trig functions. We want to find angle A uh, for a triangle uh, with leg equal to uh, A equal to 3 in a hypothesis hypotenuse equal to 9. So what that means is you know that you're dealing with a right triangle, and we know that right triangles have a relationship with the trig functions. Um, so if I'm looking for angle A, we know that side A is opposite from it. So if, if I'm calling this angle A, then side A will be 3, the hypotenuse is 9, and um, I know that the sine of A is opposite over hypotenuse, but I don't need to know what the sine of A is, I need to know what A is. So you take the inverse trig function of 3 over 9, which reduces to a third, and enter that into a calculator, again in degree mode, you would get that A is 19.47. Okay, here's an example of how um, those relationships work, and we're going to use our inverse trig functions in three different ways. So you're given the following triangle uh, where all of the sides are identified um, and you want to find angle theta and we're going to find that angle in terms of the arc sine, the arc cosine, and the arc tangent because we know all three sides. Um, you could use really any one of those three in order to identify this angle and this should, they should all give you the same result. Um, and they do. So. Uh, let's start with sine. Sine of this angle is opposite over hypotenuse. So when I take, when I want to evaluate the angle, it's sine inverse of 30 over 34, which gives me 
Um, if I want to use cosine, that is um, adjacent over hypotenuse, which is 16 over 34. So the cosine inverse of 16 over 34 gives me the same angle. And it should because theta isn't changing. Um, and then I'm going to use tangent to see if I get the same answer. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. So that's 30 over 16. Tangent in, tan inverse of 30 over 16 is again 61.93. They all give you the same answer. So the point of this exercise is to show you that if you have a choice on which trig function to use, um, use one of these three. They will all give you the same result. Um, with secant inverse, cosecant inverse, and cotangent inverse, you would still get the same result, but you'd have to do a little manipulation first before you can input it into the calculator. All right, so here's another example of where we're not finding theta. We want to find the cosecant of theta, given that the cosine of theta is 0.1063. So I know that theta is cos cosine inverse of 0 0.1063, and I need that theta in order to evaluate cosecant. Okay, but remember, cosecant is the reciprocal of sine, because again, you don't have cosecant in your calculator, you have sine. So cosecant is 1 over sine of, and my theta gets replaced with this, so it's 1 over sine of cosine inverse of 0 0.1063. And this could be, again, entered into a calculator all at the same time. You should practice using your calculator um, and get comfortable with it. And so that is 1.006. All right, so in this case, we don't need a calculator. We're going to find an exact value, and that's because these are angles that we should already know um, based on these results that we're getting. So I know um, I need to solve for the angle given that um, you're, you're finding the sine inverse of root 3 over 2. So remember there are two triangles that you should know really well. One is the 30, 60, 90, and the other one is the 45, 45, 90. Root 3 over 2 means that the sine is opposite is root 3, and hypotenuse is 2, and that's your 60 degree angle. But since we want it in radians, 60 degrees is pi over 3. Cosine inverse of negative 1. Where is cosine equal to negative 1? Well, that is um, on the quadrantal angle right here at pi. And so cosine inverse of negative 1 is just pi. Um, and then tan inverse of root 2 over 2. Um, so root 2 over, nope, this is, this is incorrect. This should be a, um, let's make it a sine as well, otherwise this won't work. Sine inverse of root 2 over 2, where is your, um, where is your sine equal to root 2 over 2? That's when it is equal to pi over 4. Uh, and since I wrote a tan and I got rid of it, tan inverse of 1, well, that would also be pi over 4 because a 45-degree angle is where your opposite and your adjacent side are equal, so two equal sides would give you a value of 1. Um, and then we have cosecant inverse of 1. Um, well, that's at pi over 2, and again, that's at a quadrantal angle. When you're at pi over 2, your sine is 1, and therefore your cosecant, which is the reciprocal, is also 1. All right, so let's do another example. We want to evaluate the following in radians and degrees. Um, so it's more of the same, and these are all quadrantal angles. And actually, I just did this one above. Um, sine inverse of negative 1. Um, so remember, normally, um, negative 1 is, is down here, and you would say 3 pi over 2, but I'm going to remind you of what you had um, way at the beginning. The, um, the range is negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, so you can't say 3 pi over 2, 
but negative pi over 2 is the same as 3 pi over 2. This is negative pi over 2. So you have to state negative pi over 2 or 90 degrees. Um, cosine is equal to 1 at 0. So 0 radians. This is when cosine is 1. Um, so 0 radians or 0 degrees. And as I mentioned before, tan inverse of 1, that's when you have a 45, 45 degree triangle. And so that is pi over 4 radians or 45 degrees. Okay, so here's a little bit more of the same. We want to evaluate the following in um, degrees and in radians. And so cosecant inverse of 1 is pi over 2. We did that one above. Stated in degrees, that would be 90 degrees. Um, again, because cosecant and sine are reciprocals. Um, but here's another one where you need to remember your triangles. So um, here's a reminder of what the triangle looks like. Um, 60 degrees is pi over 3. Um, and secant of 60 degrees is hypotenuse over adjacent, which is 2. So the secant inverse of 2 is pi over 3, or 60 degrees. So you really are looking for some combination of like root 3 over 2, or 1 half, or, or the reciprocals of them. Um, in, in order to help you solve these. So here's another one that should look familiar, sine inverse of root 2 over 2. What For what angle would the sine equal root 2 over 2? Um, where again, here is your 45, 45 degree triangle. That's when uh, it's pi over 4 in radians or 45 degrees in uh, degrees. Um, so that's that's that. So here's some word problems that um, that we should look at. So we have here in example nine, a 40 foot ladder leans against a building. If the base of the ladder is six feet from the base of the building, what is the angle formed by the ladder and the building? Express the, ad the angle in degrees rounded to the tenths place. All right, so oftentimes a picture is helpful. So if this is my building and this is the ladder leaning against the building, we know there's a ground as well. So here's my right triangle. So we know that the ladder is 40 feet long. That's given in the problem. Um, and the base of the ladder is six feet from the base of the building. So that means this is six feet. And um, they want to know what's the angle created by um, what is the angle formed by the ladder and the building. So that means I'm looking for this angle. Okay, so you have to read these carefully so that you don't mistakenly pick this one. That's not the one they're interested in. Um, so the relationship between that angle and the two sides given is in terms of sine. So sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse, so that's 6 over 40. Um, so if you reduce this, this is 0.15. So now we're ready to solve for the angle. So you take the sine inverse of 0.15 and round it to the tenths place. You get that the angle is about 8.6 degrees. OK, here's another one. A draftsman sets the legs of a pair of dividers so that the angle between them is 32 degrees. If each leg is 4.5 inches long, what is the distance between their ends where they touch the paper? Round the answer to the nearest tenths place. Okay, so the two legs are the ones that are labeled 4.5. These are the ends of, um, of the dividers. And I want to know what the distance is from, from one point to the other. So you are told that the angle created by these two legs is 32 degrees, so that's this angle up here. Um, and since the triangle is isosceles, if I drop a vertical line down, the way this dotted blue line is, I create two right triangles, and it divides it in half, um, which so I'm going to let one half of this be x and the other side of this be x. So if I solve for x, the distance between them will really be 2x, which is 
what I'm really trying to find out here. All right, so this could be done one of two ways, and the, the one, uh, the first way is, is typed here, and then I'll show you this other way that I wrote in red. Um, so I'm gonna use the 32 degrees and the fact that I divided it in half to say that half of the angle is 16. Um, and if I use 16 degrees, that means I can set up an equation in terms of sines, because opposite of the 16 degrees is x, and the hyp hypotenuse is, is the, the divider, which is 4.5. So I need to solve this equation. I have sine of 16 degrees is x over 4.5. So if you solve for x, you get x equals 4.5 times sine of 16 degrees. Make sure your calculator is in degree mode, and you find that x is about 1.2 inches. So when I double that, because I'm looking for, for um, 2x, uh, the distance between the two dividers is 2.4 inches. Um, so another way to do it, so this is or, um, I can use the fact that I have an isosceles triangle to figure out what my two base angles are. So my two base angles are, are the ones here in, the, in these two corners here. So two times theta, so my base angles are each called theta, plus 32 must equal 180 degrees. So we know that's a fact of a triangle. So if I solve for theta, first I subtract 32, then I divide by two, and so that means that each base angle is 74 degrees. So now if I use the 74 degrees, then I can use cosine. So the cosine of 74 degrees is adjacent over hypotenuse, which is x over 4.5. Multiply both sides by 4.5. I need to enter 4.5 times the cosine of 74 degrees into a calculator. I get the same x value I did before. You double it and you still get the same answer. So either way would be fine. Um, all right, so here's another one. The straight arm of a, of a robot is 1.25 meters long and makes an angle of 13 degrees above a horizontal conveyor belt. How high above the belt is the end of the arm? All right, so here's my robotic arm. We were told it's 1.25 meters long. Um, here's the floor down here, and we wanna know how high above the um, the, well, actually they called it a belt, not, not the floor. So high, high, how high above the belt is this robotic arm? So I need to solve for this variable X. And you know that the angle made between the belt and the arm is 13 degrees. So using the 13 degrees, um, again, sine makes sense because it's opposite over hypotenuse. Um, and here's my right angle. So 1.25 is the hypotenuse. So this is the equation I need to solve. So solving for x, I get 1.25 times the sine of 13 degrees. Again, make sure you're in degree mode. You get 0.281 meters high. Okay, so these next uh, few questions are regarding um, problems that refer to either an angle of elevation or an angle of depression. So an angle of ele elevation is the angle between the horizontal line and the line of sight when the object that is being observed is above the horizontal line. All right, so here's a picture of what that would look like. You would have somebody or something, an observer, looking at an object that's above, above them. It's either in the air, at the top of a mountain or a cliff, or they're looking up. So the horizontal would essentially be the floor or where they're at, where their line of vision is if they were looking straight. And the angle created by that floor and the object that they're looking at is called the angle of elevation, which is between the two. Um, in contrast, we might have something called an angle of depression. And an angle of depression is the angle between the horizontal line and the line of sight when the object that is being observed is below the horizontal line. So imagine you have someone in a plane or at the top of a mountain that's looking down at something. So the horizontal would be as if they were just looking straight out across at the horizon. 
Um, and then if their line of sight goes down to this object, the angle between the horizontal and the object is called this angle of depression. All right, so here's an example. The Sears Tower in Chicago can be seen from a point on the ground known to be 5,200 feet from the base of the tower. The angle of elevation from the observer to the top of the tower is 15.6 degrees. How high is the Sears Tower rounded to the nearest foot? So we need to round to a whole number here. All right, so we have an observer on the ground. Here's my observer. Um, and the observer is looking at the top of the Sears Tower. Okay. Um, and they are 5,200 feet away from this tower. And the angle, so my, my picture isn't super accurate, but this is a pretty small angle, is 15.6 degrees, but it's to illustrate how to come up with our equation. All right, so what am I looking for? I need a variable. Let's call this x. I want to know how high the tower is, and the tower is, is here. Um, so the trig function that makes sense is to use tangent because tangent is opposite over high, over. Oops, I drew this wrong. Can we see from a point that is to be from the base of? Oh no, I drew it right. Um, uh, Tangent is opposite over adjacent, so I, I got that correct. And so now I need to solve for x, so multiply both sides by 5,200. So x is 5,200 times the tangent of 15.6 degrees. We get, rounded to the nearest whole number, we get that the tower is about 1,452 feet high. All right, so let's look at another one. Um, an observer at the top of a mountain is 18.53 meters high, observes an object below. How far is the object from the observer if the angle of depression from the observer to the object is 14 degrees? Round the answer to the hundreds place. All right, so this time your observer is at the top of a mountain and um, we know that mountain is 18.53 meters. The observer is looking down at an object. Um, so here's the object. And the angle of depression, so here's your angle of depression, is 14 degrees. So that's this, okay? So if I draw this um, like this, I know that I have a right triangle here. If this is 18.53, so is this. So I'm trying to find um, how far the object is from the observer. So that's the X. Um, so what makes sense? So it's opposite over hypotenuse. So again, sine makes sense. Opposite of 14 degrees is uh, is uh, 18.53, and the hypotenuse is what we're looking for, that's x. So if I cross multiply, I get x equals 18.53 divided by the sine of 14 degrees. Again, you need to be in degree mode, and you get that x is 76.59 meters. Okay, okay, here's one more. We have a tree. Um, and the tree casts a shadow that is uh, 23.1 feet long um, when the ang angle of elevation to the sun is 62.6 degrees. How tall is the tree rounded to the nearest tenths place? All right, so this tree casts a shadow. It is 23.1 feet long. Um, we know that there's an angle of elevation, which is 62.6 degrees. And the question is, how tall is the tree? So that's this, which is X. Okay, so what makes sense? Tangent, uh, because X is opposite and 23.1 is adjacent. I don't know anything about this hypotenuse and I really can't figure that 
Well, it's not necessary to figure that out. So I have the tangent of 62.6 degrees is um, x over 23.1. Solving for x, you need to compute uh, 22, um, where did that come from? 23.1 times the tangent of 62.6 degrees, and we get our, our answer of 44.6 and that is in feet. Okay, so that's it for that lesson. Give the homework a try, good luck.